The Problem of the Cross, Redeeming the Time Brothers podcast, a podcast by Gene Kissinger and Norman Kissinger, two brothers who spent their lives in ministry and raising large families. Our desire is to provide a digital place for those who long to belong. And as always, we want to leave a nightlight on for you. That nightlight is out of John chapter 12, verse 24. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. And really he's talking about what's going to happen in the crucifixion of Christ. Jesus will die. He will die for our sins. We call this day Good Friday, remembering the crucifixion of Christ, where at 9 o'clock in the morning Jesus was crucified. At noon the sky darkened. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon he died. And about 6 that night he was laid to rest in a tomb. Good Friday is only good for us. It certainly wasn't good for him. In fact, the night before the crucifixion, Jesus prayed for the cup to pass from him in the Garden of Gethsemane, a grove of olives at the base, a grove of olive trees at the base of the Mount of Olives. It's believed to be where Jesus, where the uh, menorah got its olive oil to burn in the temple, and Jesus was there crushed in the garden just like those olives were crushed to get the oil to shed the light and Jesus is the light of the world and his death on the cross sheds light so that you and I can find our way home to heaven to be with God this idea of Good Friday though it causes a lot of problems I'd like to read a little bit the very idea of Good Friday causes us concern the problem is that both his power and wisdom led him to the cross, a brutal denial of everything he had done before. Those who had seen his power wondered why he was so powerless in his, in his greatest need. Those who saw his wisdom and intelligence wondered how someone so wise could miscalculate so badly. Both sides missed what Jesus and the Father were saying. And here's our verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. Not just his words, his life was a, a teaching point for us. The people we speak to week after week have a problem with the cross. Religious-minded people want miracles and power. The intellectually-minded people want wisdom and truth. What God often uh, ca- but what God offers us often first is the cross. The earliest believers called the cross the wisdom and power of God. 1 Corinthians 1, 23. These, th- this is a stumbling block for, uh, for us to consider today. That both the power and wisdom led him to the cross. People prefer not to dwell on such things. After all, who respects suffering? When is the last time you spoke to your people about suffering? Those words were written to us pastors to jar our mind into talking about the cross more. Uh, somehow we've taken to talking about the crowns and rewards without talking about the cross and the suffering. And Christ calls us to take up our cross daily and follow him. And we are to, to crucify our old flesh, our old nature. We're to identify with his crucifixion on the cross to even be born again into the kingdom of God. So as I identify with him and enter into his crucifixion on the cross, then he identifies with me and enters into my current life. And God sees me as Christ's righteousness as a result of that tremendous transaction. So in that excruciating moment of suffering, Jesus accomplished the greatest transaction ever. I gave him my guilt and he gave me his grace. I gave him my mess and he gave me his mercy. I gave him my sin and he gave me salvation. And now he walks me on a road to sanctification, to grow me into the image of his, of his son, of himself, so that I can become Christ-like in my walk. Um, we don't often think about suffering, and yet suffering is so often a part of this life. And the crucifixion was excruciating. And Jesus teaches us about suffering, teaches us how to handle suffering, and that suffering can even be redemptive and a part of God's plan and purpose for our life. And ultimately, though, he brings us to a place where there is no suffering, that wonderful home called heaven. And that's what the cross is all about. So when we think about Easter, don't just think about the new life that comes out of the tomb on Sunday morning. Do remember the sacrifice of Christ on the cross that provides that new life on Friday. So we remember his sacrifice for us today. What a good God. We don't deserve the suffering that he did for us, but we are so thankful that he did. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, I thank you for the sacrifice that you made 
by sending your Son, the second person of the Trinity, to come and die on the cross for my sin. God, I didn't deserve anything except separation from you forever in a place called hell. And yet you chose to make the most magnificent transaction that's ever been completed in the history of humanity. What a good God you are. Thank you for your kindness. Lord, your mercy endures forever and ever. Praise ye the Lord our God. Your mercy shall never end. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. I love you, but Jesus loves you so much more. Have a great night.